If you've been a subscriber to the channel for a while, you may remember some videos I created covering how Tyrant, aka Mr. X, and Nemesis work off camera during the Resident Evil remakes. Well, here we are again, a new Resident Evil and a new villain to take a look at. This time around, it is of course the turn of Alcina Dimitrisk, also known as Lady Dimitrisk, or just Lady D if that's what you prefer. So in this video, we'll be covering how she works off camera when the player can't normally see her. Those little arms. So, to start off with, we meet Lady Dimitrisk for the first time after being dragged through the corridors of the Castle Dimitrisk into this room where she sat enjoying a nice glass of, well, blood, I guess it would be. Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> As you can see, she is already sat in the chair long before we enter the room, and that's because she spawns in that chair just at the beginning of the cutscene. Now, that may not seem too surprising, especially if you've seen some of my videos in the past and know how this type of thing works. However, what I'm not going to do is dress this video up in any way, shape or form, or give you any false information just to make it sound better than it is. I'm just going to be telling you the facts of exactly what I've found from doing some experiments over the past couple of weeks to answer some of the questions that I've been receiving on social media. So having said that, it is true. A lot of the time throughout the various points, she does simply just spawn when we hit trigger points and then disappears off camera when no longer needed in the scene. It is as simple as that. However, luckily, it does get a little more interesting later on. One of those times is just after the mirror scene, which we took a look at in more detail in my previous video. After this, instead of simply disappearing, we can find the developers decided to keep her loaded into the scene by making her walk through the walls to the outside corridor. That is, until we use the key in the door. Oh shit. There you are. All this for a child who isn't even here. <laughs> what the hell do- ah! Something else I found fairly interesting is that at certain times, even whilst out of bounds or during the cutscenes off camera, her head movements and eyes still track Ethan. A good example I can show you of this is once we've managed to get our hand back and start to raise the statue lift. Take a look at what she does beyond the doorway. Okay, so we're getting to the point in the video where we're going to take a look at what happens off camera in the points where she doesn't just spawn and despawn, as there's really not much point in showing any more of that. What I'd like to do now is concentrate on the scene whilst inside the opera hall, where it seems that if you do manage to hide, Lady Dimitrisk will hunt you down. I'll show you exactly how I managed to hide in just a moment, which may actually come as a bit of a shock. Until then, here we can see she is moving around the hall trying to find me. Or so it seems. Now by studying her movements for long enough, I managed to find out that whilst off camera, as long as she doesn't get interrupted by the player, and what I mean by that is of course see or hear them, she will follow a set path around the hall over and over again. And each pass takes around two to three minutes in real time. So the question is, is she randomly walking around the opera hall trying to find the player? The answer is no. She is constantly on the lookout, but only on a set path. If you are wondering where I managed to hide, well, it's not the most obvious of choices for a hiding place, but for some bizarre reason, works pretty well. All you have to do is stand in this corner near the iron gate to the library, 
and she just doesn't seem to see you. She'll just walk on by. In fact, after picking up the key from the piano, if you manage to run straight past her and get to this gate, take a look at what happens. Range. So at this point I do just want to point out that all the experiments I did were on the standard difficulty level. Maybe changing the difficulty would increase the AI's targeting range, but I doubt it would have too much effect on what I'm about to show you anyway. So we're in the main section of the castle now and I tracked Alcina's movements from various locations, which gave me different results, and I'll try and explain why. Cassandra! Come here, now! Enough games! I want that man's head! Now go! Of course, Mother. To start off with, I stood at the top of the main steps, and after this brief interaction with Cassandra, Alcina decided to walk into the dining room and then back out again. Once she re-entered the hall, she went to the lower section, which is where something went a little wrong. Once she gets into this corridor, as you can see, there is no door to go through, and she gets stuck. Why does she get stuck? Well, watch what happens when we load the door into the map. Yep, you guessed it, she goes straight through. Of course, this happens because when the door is not loaded, she can't interact with it. Therefore, her animation can't start, so she can't pass through the doorway itself. However, after testing various places, I did manage to find an ideal location for this experiment. Mainly because whilst in the bell puzzle room, the lower section of the main hall is not loaded at all. Therefore, she can walk around down here without her ducking animation needing to be triggered. Whilst the top floors, the doors are still loaded, meaning Alcina can now practically walk around freely the whole of the castle and we can track her movements without any interruptions. Here's what happened next. Again, after the interaction with Cassandra, she came from the dining room and did a circuit of the hall, this time of course being able to get all of the way around. Once that first circuit around the hall had finished and she was at the bottom of the staircase, then a continuous loop path seemed to trigger, much like the one we saw earlier in the opera hall, only on a longer path, which took around five to six minutes for her to complete each loop. This was practically the same outcome I got for most of the different locations I stood in. There was only one that had a difference, which I'll show in just a moment. So depending on which location you are in, depends how much of the map is loaded, and this relates to how far she can walk before becoming stuck. So again, in a way, I guess Lady Dimitrisk is prowling around the castle looking for you off camera, but until the point at which you either enter her field of vision or she hears a gunshot and comes to your location, she is just on a set path. The location that I mentioned that I found to be different was in the hallway leading towards the kitchen. As you'll be able to tell from the way I positioned the camera, I was expecting the same result with her walking through the door to the main hallway. However, to my surprise, she did trick me on this occasion and walked out into the courtyard, which is a little different, and at first it made me think my theory over again. Then after a little more experimentation, I found it seems if Ethan's location is anywhere behind the dining room door, it makes this loop happen instead. <laughs> So 
So there we go, that is practically how Lady Dimitrisk works off camera. Now, obviously I haven't had time to try this in every single room, and it could be that there are other locations within the castle that change the path or the outcome of which way she goes. I'd love to hear if you have had any different conclusions to this, but I have put a lot of time into testing different scenarios just to try and cover all bases and most of the questions viewers may have had on this topic. Just so you know, and I found this kind of sad actually, but after you open the coffin inside the chapel, you'll no longer be able to find her roaming the halls of the castle. Once you do this, she disappears, and you'll be running around inside this place all alone. Now, this is something I did show in my last video whilst we were exploring Outer Bounds of the Castle, but I guess it does relate to how Alcina works off camera. So, very quickly, as she starts to mutate, she flies off to the left of the screen. This is when she spawns as the mutant we see next, leaving behind the wings and tail that we saw grow from her. Well, there we go. I just want to say a massive thank you for all the support recently. I've been getting all sorts of awesome comments and DMs about my videos. I do try to get the content out as fast as I can, but as I've said before, I don't do YouTube as a full-time job, and these aren't exactly the types of videos you can just bang together in a few hours. They do take a bit of doing, so I really do appreciate the support and patience in waiting for my content, which reminds me actually, there's plenty more Resident Evil Village coming up. But until then, as always, take care and I'll catch you soon.